Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, August 1st, 2018. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Bill Green Bank. Welcome to August, and uh, thank you for getting up early this morning. I appreciate it. Hey, glad to be here, Dave. Let's start at the top. Zach Harrison, obviously everybody's talking about him. I know you've answered questions on the board. Um, Just what do you make of Zach Harrison pushing his announcement back, or at least not making his announcement by August 14th? Um, Not good news for Ohio State, but what do you make of it? You know, I think it's pretty consistent with what we've seen all along, Dave. I don't think he knows where he wants to go yet, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, a lot of guys wait till signing day to make their choice and, and, and sign their letter. So I think Zach has been torn all along. I think he's been pretty open and honest that he's been torn all along. He hates this stuff. He hates the interviews. He doesn't like talking to college coaches. You know, it's just, you know, the guy's trying to figure it out. And I think I think people should understand that. It's early. He hasn't even played it down yet as a senior. So I, I don't think he's playing games. I don't think he's any diva at all. Follow his Twitter. There's nothing there. You know, he doesn't put all his offers, all his visits, all the coaches he talks to. He doesn't play with the different fan bases. He's not trolling for members. You know, he's just. He's a 17-year-old kid trying to figure out the biggest decision of his life to date. And and he really doesn't understand why men that are twice his age are hanging on every word he says and this decision. He doesn't get that at all. So, you know, I I think it's consistent with how it's been all along with Zach. And when he gets it, he's going to make his announcement, and he'll be done. And that's pretty much the way it is with him. Switching gears to Brian Hartline, I read your uh, excellent blog yesterday, and it sounds like Hartline's doing a great job so far. That's no surprise. Uh, and it does sound like, just from reading between the lines, like if he is offered the job full time, that he would take it. I mean, is that – am I reading between the lines too much? Like, If Urban Meyer came to him and said, listen, I-, I want you to be the permanent wide receiver coach, not just for this year, but like for the foreseeable future, like for the next, let's say, three or four years, something like that, you think Brian Hartline would be interested in that, correct? I think he would. I think he wants a future in coaching. I think he's following the path that, you know, Mike Brabel took when he left the NFL. Um, these guys have to have something to do, you know, with the rest of their lives. They're so competitive. They need to compete, you know, and Brian is a an ultimate competitor, you know. So recruiting and coaching, I mean, it fits. It really feeds that need that these competitive junkies have. You know, and he's not going to get out of running that drive through what he's going to get, you know, at Ohio State. I had a friend of mine that got out of coaching one time, and he was a Mac coach, got out of it and went into private business with his father-in-law, who's in the oil business. And, and this guy was making a ton of money, ten times what he made as a coach. And the first opportunity he got to get back into coaching, he got out of the oil business and jumped right back into coaching, and I couldn't believe he did it. I asked him, like, why would you do that, all the money you gave up and the future you gave up for such an unstable business? And the answer he gave was, you don't run out of any tunnels in the oil business. And I think these guys feed off that stuff, and I think they need it. And I think Brian is, man, I think he's going to do great, and I think this is going to be the rest of his life's work. That's awesome. And um what are recruits saying about him so far? Have you talked to many recruits? I know it's early, but what are recruits saying about Coach Hartline? Yeah, when you see the comments from the wide receivers they had in last week, the 2020 kids, I mean, kids are saying they want to play for the guy, how impressive the guy is, and that's no surprise. You know, you've talked to him before. I mean, you know what how dynamic he is. Um, I think he's going to do great. You know, Zach Smith was a tremendous recruiter. And there's just no way to deny that. I think Brian can be just as effective a recruiter because Zach could never draw on his experience, you know, as a college star or an NFL star because he didn't have that. You know, but Brian does. Brian can point to his accomplishments, what he's done on the field. And then when you listen to him describe the position, you know he knows what he's talking about. So I think he can be everything Zach Smith was but more on the field. I want to ask you about a couple of Ohio kids that are somewhat under the radar, not for Bucknuts um, loyalists, that's for sure. But starting with Jonathan Allen, the offensive tackle at Dayton Dunbar, what's the status with him? Like, how Does Ohio State, are they just kind of, what are they waiting for? What do they need to see out of Jonathan Allen? I, I think they know what Jonathan is. 
And I think they have to decide how much time are we going to have to put into Jonathan Allen to get him to where he can block the Rashawn Garys in the Big Ten. He is not ready to do that right now, Dave. Um, he has not played much football. He was always going to be a basketball guy all his life. And got a little taller and, you know, switched over to football. And he has a chance to be really good down the road. And what Ohio State has to figure out is, can they get better than Jonathan Allen in this class? And if not, then if they take Jonathan, is it going to take four years to get him to be ready to play? Is it going to take one year? Does it take two? They've got to figure out how long it's going to take, and they may want to see senior film just to see where he's at compared to last year. And then you've got to draw a line. Like, it, it, you know, the line is either, yes, we can, we can get this guy up to speed in this short time frame, or no, this is going to take too long, too much of an investment, too much time before we get a payoff, you know. So – that's, I think, what the, what the decision is for Ohio State right now. I think Jonathan would commit to Ohio State today if they would take him. He has jumped through every hoop they've asked. He's come back to camp every time they ask him to come back. I think he was there three times this summer for camps. Um, he would come to campus. If they call him, you know, this morning and tell him to come for lunch today, he'll be there. So he's doing his part. They've just got to decide the time frame that it's going to take to get Jonathan Allen on the field and then decide if, yes, we want to wait that long or no, we're not going to put this much time in to get, you know, one year out of the guy. And the other young man I want to ask you about, defensive tackle from Springfield, Ohio, Isaiah Gibson. It, he's got a decent offer list. I mean, could Ohio State get interested in Isaiah Gibson if they strike out, I guess, on some of the national defensive tackles they're going after? I think they can, um, and I think he's good enough. You know, I I like Tyler Davis a lot. I just think that one's starting to float away from Ohio State. Um, Antonosa Rubin now has gone to Clemson. Uh, Jared Harrison Hunt, I just – I I don't know that he's better than Isaiah Gibson, number one. And number two, I think Penn State's got a pretty good hold on him. But you keep dropping down there, and then there's this six foot four, 290-pound kid I mean, he had a great summer. He really did. He was better in the summer at the camps than he was on junior film. So kind of like Jonathan Allen, Ohio State knows about Isaiah Gibson. And they're going to watch those first two or three games and then decide if, you know, is he good enough for us. Off of what he did as a junior, I think their answer would have been no. I think their answer is no. You know, they haven't offered him. He didn't come to camp. There hasn't been much interest there. But I think he's someone who kind of fits what they're trying, what they're looking for, and I think he's going to have a really big senior year. I saw him this summer. Ohio State never did. I saw him four times. I think they're going to be surprised at what they see when the games start, and I think they're going to like that film the first two or three games, and he could be a guy that, that they go after late. I could see it. I like it. I always like those Ohio kids. Uh, last thing before I get you out of here, Moving away from recruiting, obviously Ohio State's preseason camp starts this Friday. Uh, what are you most interested in seeing or hearing about uh, when camp kicks off? Yeah, for me, I mean, just about every position group has some sort of interest level there. But for me, and, and I keep writing this, it's, it's this offensive line. I think that's the key to the whole team is this offensive line. I think if this line is great, then this team is going to be nearly unbeatable. And if this offensive line sucks or is not very good, then I don't think this team's going to be all that good. So I think this is the key to the team. Get the center position solved. Is Jordan fully healthy? Is Bowen fully healthy? Can't their Mumford play? We do not know that. I mean, we write it like we know it, but we haven't seen it. And is there depth? There wasn't last year. When you threw Joe's, Joe Alibi on the field, it wasn't pretty. So – this is a huge question mark to me, but I think if this line is really good to great, then everything else is going to fall into place. They're going to run the ball, I mean, down people's throats. The receivers are experienced. I think they're good. I know some people kind of question the talent there. I don't. I think those guys are really good. Um, and if that line is great, then Haskins, his job gets so much easier. 
you know, if they're mashing that ball with the run and they can protect him, he's got all these experienced receivers, he's going to be really good. So then that just takes so much pressure off his defense. You remember last year, I mean, they were beating Wisconsin, beating USC. Those were very low-scoring games. The offense was producing nothing, but the defense was giving up nothing. And that's just too much to ask in this era that we're in of offensive football. You know, it's too much to ask your defense. So I think if this offensive line is quality, and I hate to use the word great or very good, let's just say quality. If it's a quality offensive line, then this team is going to be very hard to beat week after week. So that's what I'm most interested in. I want to see who's starting. You know, is Brady Taylor the center? Is he not the center? Are these guys healthy? That's, to me, it determines the whole year. Fantastic insights, as always, from Bill Bank Green. Really appreciate it, Bank. And thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I appreciate that as well. Hope you have a great day. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Oh, my God.